Kevin Harvick, Inc., and, and these guys, uh, every time I've come here, they always bring a good car. And I know it didn't show up qualifying-wise, but uh, I, I think we got a car that's going to be pretty good for the race here again. To the start, it's led by Clint Boyer, Landon Castle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Danica Patrick. And the green flag flies, and the 2011 NASCAR Nationwide Series season is green. Turn number two. You can already see a couple of the cars getting in that two-car tandem hookup, namely the two Sprint Cup veterans, Boyer and Dale Jr. Yeah, I'm real interested to see just how this is going to work. If it's going to work like we did with the Cup cars, you see Landon Castle now losing a little bit of touch of the leaders. Are these two cars going to be able to break away like we've seen? Up high, it's the two Toyotas of Joe Gibbs Racing, Kyle Busch in front of Joey. Well, you're right, Dale. Trevor Bain doing a great job pushing. Hornish right in the middle. Oh, oh it looks like see, Brian Scott gets turned. May it's have got a little too much of a bump. Four, three, two, one. Coming. Just keep going. Keep going. I didn't look at it on the pace lap, so I didn't know what it looked like. So, my bad. Uh, it's going to force Dale Earnhardt Jr. to start back in the 33rd position because he did come back down pit road, did take tires, did get a full load of fuel. It's Boyer, Logano, Stenhouse, Bain, and Kane. That's your top five. And Boyer has taken the inside line, and we're back to green here at Daytona. for the lead up front as they come down to complete lap number 23 side by side which one of the Joe Gibbs cars is going to hold on to it it's going to be Kyle Busch Andy I'll add on to what you were talking about there it is Danica she has some responsibility there to get that car behind her latched onto her rear bumper so that's something that she's going to have to learn here throughout the day oh, trouble, trouble. trouble in turn two several cars around the 62 of Michael Annette Elliott okay, Sandler's good. involved so Kyle Busch comes to the stripe, and we're back to green flag racing here on lap number 29. Yeah, here we go. And he is giving her the push right past Keslowski and Bain. Oh yeah, she, they're going to get they're going to get to the lead here. Kyle Busch still up front. The question is for how long? You can see the differential and how quickly they are closing. Will we have our six different leader this time by? It's going to be close, but it looks like Kyle May. No, no. Danica. Danica Patrick is going to lead. Keep it in the middle right here. Yeah, they're averaging 194, 195 miles an hour on these laps. That's uh, 15 miles an hour faster than they qualify. Yeah, and the good thing here is that these uh, Kevin Harvick cars are able to stay tucked in. Clint Boyer's getting just enough air to it that he can stay behind Danica and keep pushing where they don't have to make this switch. There's Boyer trying to get more air on his uh, front. He's got to make the switch here soon. They've been going several laps. Here it comes. Okay, the key's going to be, can she get in there and get last stone to Clint? Well, it's me to get behind him and push. I can try that. And, and just tell me what I need to do with him because I don't know. I'm just keeping it flat. So she's trying to find out, if, does she want, does he want her to push? And Let him get to you here. Now Clint can't just sit back there and run, uh, you know, a lot of laps. He's got to get air to the front of that car. Well, Tony Stewart's had one of those up and down days. He was running up front, led the race early on. Then they came for that initial pit stop, and he stalled the car in the pit. So he lost several positions and has had to come from deep in the field again. But once Clint Boyer up with him. The two have really been on the move, making their way back toward the front. Hey, Joe, when we switch, drag the brake a little bit just to start your slowdown, you know? Because these cars, when you pull out, you just run into a brick of air. These cars help quicker. Yeah, like if you slow down, the, if you slow down just a little bit faster, then we can get a line quicker. Like when, when you pull off of me, I use a little bit of brake to slow down to get you in front of me faster. That is a lesson in two-car tandem draft. We've got a spinner, got Sam Hornish. Sam Hornish going around again. That's uh, right into pit in. And he's going to bang the wall with the left front. Up 
front. It's Legato, Bush, Bain, Boyer, and Nemechek, and we're green again. And we're going to have a penalty on somebody because the 7, the 70, and the 38 were three wide at the start of this race. They didn't get in line, so I don't know whose fault it is. NASCAR will sort that out. It looked like they were arguing over starting position there because they were that way all the way around off turn four. High side, the four, Tony Stewart. Remember, he has won here three years in a row, five of the last six. And his uh, blonde-headed prom date <laughs> pushing him right behind. <laughs> he made that comment over the radio right before we came at the top of the hour. Up front, hey, Look though, at Junior. Here comes Junior right behind the Joe Gibbs Racing pit Duo. Kozlowski has spun and coming back onto the track and oh, gets tagged. Well, you see it there, that right rear of Tony Stewart spotter Bob Jeffrey just radioed the crew and said, we got a flat right rear, sure enough. Now, the pits are closed, but Stewart believes he needs to go ahead and come on in. Now they're going to open them up, so the pits are open. Stewart's going to go ahead and come. There's the crew of Tony Stewart. Now, this is his cup crew, so certainly well-versed in handling this situation. Bruce Cook, the crew chief, you hear him there just saying, make sure take your time. Make sure you get the grill clean. There's the uh, leftovers of that right rear tire that had gone flat, but they want to make sure that there's no significant body damage on the right side. We want to head and take care of that left side tires as well. Green flag flies. We're racing at Daytona again. Big push now on this one car. Let's see if they can go to the front. This time by five laps remaining here at Daytona. Let's get more on the one car, Dave. Marty, they thought if the four got up to the one, they told Landon, Landon, just let him get up there and then he won't have a choice. He'll push you. He will be your partner. Well, they have made the connection and here they come down on the low side of the track. 21 year old Landon Castle has a five time winner stuck on his rear bumper. They go past Reed Sorensen. Is he going to push that car by? Well, as you see, Tony Stewart duck out now. Tony makes the switch. And he we haven't seen, high. yeah, we haven't seen Castle be able to latch on and do quite as good a job when he was uh, with Brad Keselowski earlier on. They made a pretty good exchange right there, but it looks like they may get shuffled a little bit. White flag is out. Here we go. Who's going to win it at Daytona? We see Reed Sorensen. Oh, oh, right. Look out. Okay, look out on. into the wall. He caroms off. Everybody He'll else gets by. He'll go back into the wall. The white flag's still out. No caution We're on the still racing that into turn three. Junior's right on the bumper. Clint Boyer. Does he make history? Dale Earnhardt Jr. Or does Clint Boyer win? And here comes Tony Stewart. He's getting the push from Castle. Coming out of four. This is really going to okay, be Okay, here goes Junior to the inside. Junior to the right, inside. inside, inside. Boyer takes the lead and pulls up. Oh. And at the stripe, it's Boyer. Stewart. Now Stewart. There it is. It's right Stewart. at the very front. Seven one-thousandths of a second. Incredible. 